Hey everybody, for bloodhorse.com, I'm Evan Hammonds and welcome to After the Wire, the Super Saturday Recap Edition. On the second day of the Breeders' Cup program, coming up on Saturday, November 3rd, there are eight grade one races on the Santa Anita card. This past Saturday, there was a stampede of 10 grade one races split between Belmont Park and Santa Anita. Now we were surgically attached to our laptop from about 3 p.m. to just after 9 p.m. here on the East Coast, taking in all the action. Here's a little of what we learned. First, let's look at the Classic Division, where we witnessed the Jockey Club Gold Cup at Belmont and the Awesome Again Stakes at Santa Anita. In New York, Stay Thirsty and Ruler on Ice got into a little bit of a rugby scrum, both setting their sights on the lead from the starting gate, and Stay Thirsty won the early battle and was allowed to control the tempo under Ramon Dominguez. Now he set sensible fractions while being tracked by the two top choices in the race, that was Fort Larned and Flat Out. Of those two, Flat Out was the fresher horse while making his third, stop, third start off a five month layoff. Now Stay Thirsty had plenty of juice in the lemon in the stretch, but Flat Out was able to reel him in at the 16th pole and edge clear in a pretty dramatic duel there. That was apparent in early stretch it wasn't Fort Larned's day. Now the Gold Cup brought together a sexier field and offered a dramatic finish, but its outcome will have a minimal impact on the Breeders' Cup Classic. Some horses just really like the surface and layout of Belmont Park, and the top pair fit that profile. Flat Out has won only three of 13 of his starts away from Naira Tracks, with his last win coming at Fairgrounds in December 2010. That was in his sixth career start. Stay Thirsty has made four starts west of the New York border and has failed to hit the board in any of them. Now Flat Out, trained by Bill Mott, became the fifth horse to win the Bre in the Breeders' Cup era to win back-to-back -back Gold Cups, joining Slew of Gold, Creme Fresh, Skip Away, and Curlin. Now Skippy and Curlin were able to go on and win the Classic, with Skippy pulling off the trick going from New York out to the West Coast to win at Hollywood Park back in 97. Hall of Famer Mott will have three in the big dance with Flat Out, Ron the Greek, who should run better next time, and to honor and serve, who was a dull fourth in the uh, Kelso handicap. Now in the awesome again at Santa Anita, Game On Dude did his thing under new rider Rafael Bejarano and won just like a three to 10 shot should. We thought he was the best older horse in training at the start of the year, and we think the same thing now. Enough said. Now my e-ticket for the classic, it's pretty chalky, but we have Game On Dude on top. Still like Fort Larned and Ron the Greek in the second and third slots. Off last weekend, stirring Cotillion, we thought we had it figured out, and then we saw the Bell Dame on Saturday at Belmont. There are certain horses that are just able to take your breath away with the way they run down the stretch. Royal Delta is one of those horses, and this was one of those performances. Jockey Eddie Castro on its tricky, Figured he might have, an, might have the early lead all to himself, but was pressed by Mike Smith and Royal Delta from the onset. Never catching a breather, Castro went to the whip on the turn, which is never a good sign, and when Royal Delta was ready, she set sail. Each and every stride from the champion helped her separate herself from her rivals. She made them just look ordinary. Oh, by the way, she's trained by Bill Mott. Now, it's hard to imagine that she lost the race coming into this. She lost to the Green Hills Farm Love and Pride, who we, whom we would see a few hours later dismantling her foes in the Zenyatta Stakes. Can we imagine the following lineup in the Ladies Classic? You'd have Royal Delta, My Miss Aurelia, Questing, Awesome Feather, and Love and Pride. Maybe one of the best races uh, on the Breeders' Cup card. Now, our e-ticket for the Ladies Classic Changes a little bit. I'm going to move Royal Delta back up to the top where she belongs. I'm going to put Awesome Feather in the second slot with my Miss Aurelia third. A quick hit on the Chandelier Stakes for two-year-old fillies at Santa Anita, where Executive Privilege did it again, this time simply toying with her rivals in her dirt debut. Now we know it's way too early to draw comparisons, but with the way she has run up to this point, it may not be too long before we might be able to mention her name in the same breath as another Bob Baffert filly that found her way into the Hall of Fame, Silver Bullet Day. I think she's just that good. Now we'll size up the two-year-olds next week after we see the major preps at Keeneland. I'd like to thank everybody for watching After the Wire. Come on back next week.